Mortal Kombat, Doom, Grand Theft Auto, Death Race, are all titles of video games that have been put under a social microscope due to one common theme, violence. From this point on, I'm going to refer to that word as V. The debate on whether V should be allowed in video games is a tale as old as time, or at least as old as it has been a part of the industry. We know video games are not the only form of entertainment that has come under scrutiny for being a bad influence on children. In the 1950s, we had rock and roll, and then later comic books corrupting our children. But I want to dive into one of the video games I mentioned earlier. Don't worry, we'll touch on all of the other things I mentioned in future videos. But right now, I want to talk about Mortal Kombat. While we discuss this controversial video game and its impact on the industry, we are going to be doing a speed build of a new section to my massive storage biome in Disney Dreamlight Valley. If you missed my last video that featured the first section of the storage biome, I'll link it in the upper right hand corner so you can check it out after this video. In that video we also discuss a very dead Oliver Cromwell's execution. Yes, he was dead before he was executed. It was a whole thing, so you'll want to go check that out to learn more. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started on today's topic, Mortal Kombat and how it changed the video game industry. So go ahead, grab your coffee, your floofy companion, your favorite controller, and let's get started. Released in 1992, Mortal Kombat is a one-on-one -on -one martial arts fighting game that was inspired by Chinese mythology, kung fu, and action movies. Midway Games asked Ed Boon, a programmer, and John Tobias, an artist, to make a game that was able to compete with Capcom's super popular Street Fighter II. The small team worked for eight months straight to create Mortal Kombat. The game is centered around a martial arts tournament on a fictional island. Players would select between seven characters on who they wanted to fight as. What made Mortal Kombat stand out was that the characters in the game were digitized images of real-life actors instead of the typical cartoon graphics that you would typically see in fighting games at this time. I linked a video down in the description that features interviews with the actors that played the characters and other behind-the-scenes looks. Each of the seven characters had their own backstories, including the reason they were on the island to fight in the tournament, as well as their own special moves. Mortal Kombat originally started as an arcade game, and players had the choice to play a friend or to battle against the computer. Mortal Kombat was a hit, at least in the arcades. Once the game started entering living rooms on home consoles, that's when lawmakers entered the chat and began waving red flags. Their main concerns being the realistic images, over-the-top V, and the finishing moves, which were called fatalities. Most players didn't take the V seriously, and the research on the subject at the time did not support the claims that this genre of game made someone more likely to commit V in real life. The U.S. Congress held hearings on video game V where politicians said that Mortal Kombat was corrupting our youth. Not really, nothing really came from this in a way of reducing these video games. What it did do was bring on the creation of the Entertainment Software Rating Board in 1994. I'll link an article from the American Journal of Play that discusses the moral panic around violent video games and the politics surrounding game research. It's a longer read, but it's pretty interesting if you want to dive deeper into the issue.
Mortal Monday, or September 13th, 1993, was the day the original Mortal Kombat was released for home play on the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, or SNES. Before Mortal Kombat, images in games were limited by the amount of pixels they could use, often creating blocky shapes. The 90s really changed the game, in what was possible to create in the video game space. Mortal Kombat is a great example of this because of the realistic looking avatars and their fluid movements. The Sega Genesis and the SNES allowed greater pixels and more colors, which allowed for more details. At the same time, high capacity CDs were introduced, which allowed for videos of real actors to be used for the games. Senator Joe Lieberman did not like this advancement in video games and that it was being used for V video games. He stated in a letter to his colleagues on November 17, 1993, quote, At a time when real violence is threatening to tear the fabric of our country, these games glorify the most depraved acts of cruelty. While parents across the country are trying to teach their children to abhor violence, these games encourage children to enjoy the violence." Unquote. Nintendo's games up to this point were known as family-friendly, so they requested that the blood in the game be changed to green instead of red to lessen the V. Sega wanted an unedited game, but they created the Video Game Rating Council, or VRC, and rated the game M13 and added an additional par parental discretion advised on the box. Meaning the game was only for 13 years and older with a parent's supervision. Sega of America president Tom Kalink wrote to Nintendo urging them to join the VRC, stating, quote, Now when our technology is so much more sophisticated and increasingly attractive to adult audiences, it seems to me an industry-wide rating system is the type of responsible self-regulation you and your company should join us in adopting." Unquote. Because of the competition between the two companies, Nintendo did not join Sega in the VRC. Despite Sega's effort to mark their packaging, there was still confusion amongst buyers. The biggest issue that was aggravating parents and lawmakers like Lieberman was that there was no standardized way for parents to know what they were buying. There was nothing that was informing parents that they were buying a game suited for children or one that is more for adults. Lieberman and Senator Herb Cole brought the heads of Sega and Nintendo before Congress to discuss the issue. While the two companies pointed fingers at the other, Lieberman put his foot down and threatened to create a government commission to create a classification system. While Nintendo and Sega were fierce rivals, neither wanted to give the power to rate and ban video games to the government. Over four months, Nintendo, Sega, and several other big publishers in the video game space in the United States came together and created the Interactive Digital Software Association, or later renamed the Entertainment Software Association.
Now if a video game is going to be sold in a physical store in the US, it needs an age rating from the Entertainment Software Association. Also, Microsoft, Nintendo, and PlayStation all required a rating once they opened their digital stores as well. In short, the rating system is based on the trust of publishers to provide an honest summary of their games to the ESRB through questionnaires and footage of the content. The material is then assessed and the classification is given. There are fines given out and even removal from the store shelves if a publisher decides to try and deceive the ESRB by hiding content, which Grand Theft Auto San Andreas learned the hard way. The cost for hiding content and deceiving, deceiving the ESRB is so high that it isn't logistically worth it to do. Alright, well, that is the end of how Mortal Kombat started the classification system we know today in the US for video games. Now, I didn't go over the classification bodies that are in other countries. I know some countries had a regulatory body way before the US did. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give this video a like. If you are new here, don't be shy. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you know whenever I post a new video. Also, go ahead and comment below what video game you want to learn about next. I would love to hear your ideas, and who knows, I might just choose your topic for the next video. Okay, let's go ahead and get on with this walkthrough of our new storage design. I hope you have a historic day. Bye!